Hi everybody, this is Justina with Justina Tea Handmade. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a woven fabric version of the Keep It Close uh, card uh, holder. Uh, the initial version was created to be sewn out of vinyl or cork material, something that can have uh, exposed edges, but uh, I do have a lot of woven uh, cotton or quilting cotton, so I wanted to create a version that is made out of uh, woven material, but using exactly the same pattern. So if you already have a copy of the pattern, you can just use it to create this version. If you don't, uh, you can purchase the pattern following the link in the description box below. Uh, this little wallet has two card slot packets. It can obviously fit more than just two cards, but it's just uh, a small little addition maybe to your keychain or to your purse or to your wristlet. Um, you can have it attached um, by the keyring and um, have your most used uh, cards uh, easily accessible. Uh, as you can see, this version has the keyring instead of being a cell phone, at a cell phone case attachment. Uh, if you do want to make it a cell phone case attachment, you can still add the elastic tape. Uh, you will just have to sew it on instead of threading it through, um, through an opening since we don't want to uh, cut our woven material. Um, I hope you're gonna enjoy this quick tutorial and if you do create one of those uh, wallets please make sure to share it with me on the social media. The links to the Facebook group and Instagram are in the description box below. Uh, the full supply list for this version will be also included in the description as it differs uh, from the original pattern. If you have any questions or you need a little more support, uh, please leave a comment uh, in the comment section or you can um, reach out to me directly on in the Facebook group. That's the fastest way to reach me. And now, if you want to see how this little project comes together, please keep watching. To start our project, we're going to prep our pattern piece. Uh, this pattern piece is uh, from the original uh, keep it close card holder uh, that it's meant to be sewn from a vinyl or cork material uh, but uh, to adapt this to our woven uh, fabric version all you need to do you just have to fold uh, those little uh, flaps of the card slot packets straight from those little corners and this is um, the template you're gonna use to cut your interfacing. So here's my interfacing cut using this template, as you can see. Uh, I'm using Pelon 809. Uh, you can use anything um, you like. It depends how stiff you want the project to be, but you also have to keep in mind that you will have to turn the project uh, right side out. So uh, make it as stiff as you like, but also make sure you're going to be able to uh, turn it over by a burning hole. All right, so now that we have our interfacing cut, uh, we're going to take our fabric and don't, um, don't cut anything just yet because we just gonna make a rough cut uh, of, uh, of the panels based on our interfacing. Uh, first of all, you wanna uh, fuse your interfacing to, your, to the wrong side of your fabric, making sure you have about half an inch extra fabric all around your interfacing. So um, just uh, fuse the interfacing to your, uh, to your fabric. Make sure you are fusing the interfacing to the wrong side and the glue side of your interfacing is facing the wrong side of your fabric. I feel like my interfacing is 
fuse nicely to my fabric. Now what I want to do, I want to fold the fabric. Making sure the right sides of the fabrics are together so I can see the shape of my interfacing panel. Also, I wanna make sure the fabric is nice and flat. You can just press it together. And now we are gonna cut our fabric. You don't need to um, do a very a precise cut. Um, just make sure you, that you have about three eighths of an inch all around your project. So just give it a rough cut. Now that you have your fabric cut, you can clip uh, those two panels together all around. Also, you wanna make sure you're gonna mark uh, opening so you can turn the project right side out. Um, I know that uh, my project is pretty pliable, so I can just make a smaller opening. But if you are using something that it's uh, stiffer, uh, we make a larger opening to make it easy to turn it uh, right side out. I'm gonna make my turning uh, hole on the bottom of the first uh, card packet. So this edge will be hidden on the end of my project. Um, but um, as you can see here, I, my opening was uh, right here and it also looks good. So don't be afraid that it needs to be on the packet. If you need a larger one, you can uh, make it on the bottom uh, part of your uh, project. So now that I have uh, my project prep like this, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna sew, starting from one of the pins marking my opening, um, backstitch on the beginning of your uh, seam and follow the edge of uh, your interfacing. So you wanna be sewing just off uh, the edge of the interfacing on the fabric um, this way, you, first you're going to create the perfect shape of uh, the pattern piece uh, and second, it's going to be uh, nice and uh, crisp. Uh, the edges of the project are going to be nice and crisp when you turn the project right side out. So, take your project to the machine and using 2.5 stitch length, sew just off the edge of the interfacing all around, bringing it back to the second pin, marking the other side of your turning opening. Uh, like I said, uh, sew with the 2.5 uh, stitch length and make sure to backstitch on the beginning and on the end of the seam. Now um, that I have my two panels sewn together, uh, I left the opening for my turning hole right here and then I sew all around just off the interfacing template. Uh, so now that we have that done, uh, we're gonna prep our seam allowances. Uh, you wanna trim them to about one fourth of an inch. Uh, I'm gonna be using pinking shears to do that. Uh, so I'm gonna be trimming my seam allowances. Uh, I'm gonna leave a little uh, bigger seam allowances uh, where my opening is. Also, I'm gonna be trimming the corners and snipping uh, the uh, seam allowance up to my 
stitch in the inside corners. Uh, so uh, let's do that. Uh, let's prep our seam allowances. Now that I have my seam allowances trimmed, I'm going to turn my project right side out. If you're using a stiffer interfacing, you can reheat it. That should make it a little, a little more pliable. Uh, so, but I think I will be fine just turning the project as is. You can use some kind of tool to make sure your corners are nice and sharp. Just make sure you're not gonna uh, poke through the fabric. Now that uh, your project is turned right side out and you're happy with all the uh, corners and all the seams, you can make sure that you have a nice round seam, just roll it in your fingers. Now we're gonna fold our row edges inside of the project. And take your iron so you can press the project. Now that you have your project turned right side out and nicely pressed, we're gonna uh, top stitch the tops of the card packets and uh, around our flap. So uh, take the project uh, back to the machine and top stitch along this edge with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Now that your project is top stitch, um, you can now take a look at your project and figure out which side you like better. Uh, it doesn't matter to which side the interfacing is attached to. Uh, I don't find that that matters a lot. So just make sure you are choosing your uh, better looking side and that side should be now facing uh, the table. So I think uh, this side looks nicer. So I'm gonna place um, the nice side down. Now I'm gonna fold my first card packet. I want to make sure that my side is nice and straight. And now that I have that positioned, I'm gonna secure that with clips. And when you have that done, uh, you're gonna take it back to the machine and sew along this edge uh, with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance uh, and 3.5 stitch length. Uh, my tip is to actually uh, keep making sure that you are catching the bottom part of the packet, but make sure that you are referring to the bottom, the most bottom edge. Uh, as a guide this way when you have your project finished you're gonna have a nice straight line on the back and uh, it won't be visible from this side if the seam allowance on the bottom of the packet was consistent 
Uh, so that's my tip. So now uh, take it to the machine and sew the bottom of the packet on with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch line. Now that our first packet is sewn in, you're gonna fold the other side of your project, making sure you have nice straight line and those two edges are aligning and um, the side edge of your packet reaches to the other side. Secure that with clips. When you have your project prepped like this, you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along the side, the bottom, and back on the other side up to the um, top stitching of the little flap. And you're gonna be sewing with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch. And now that your second packet is attached, um, your sewing part is actually done. Now we need to attach our closure. To do that, um, make sure you put your cards into your card holder. Depending on how many cards you want to carry with you, you may want to leave a little room so you can fit more than two cards in your little wallet. So now that I have my cards inside and I fold my flap and everything is fitting nicely, uh, I'm, uh, I'm gonna find the midpoint on my flap, making sure uh, that I'm leaving enough space to uh, grab onto my flap to open it. So I have my set of my plastic snaps ready. I'm gonna um, try to fit the cap of the top part of the snap. Uh, I feel like this is a good position. I have about one fourth of an inch uh, overlap on the bottom. So now I'm gonna mark the placement, just pin on my project. Now I'm gonna make the hole and install my female part of the snap. Now that the female part is installed, I'm gonna fold the flap again, making sure I have a little room, everything looks nice and straight, and using the placement of the female part of the snap, I'm gonna mark where my male part of the snap should go. Now I'm gonna remove the cards and making sure I'm just punching a hole only through the first packet. I'm gonna use the tool to make the hole. And install the male part of the snap. So, now my little wallet is completed. If you want to add a key ring uh, to the project, uh, you can you can add a grommet. So then you can thread it onto a, a keychain ring, and that's what I'm gonna do. So now I have all my supplies for my uh, key ring. So I have. Uh, set of my grommet. This is one fourth of an inch uh, inside diameter grommet. On, uh, on this card holder, I attach the grommet on the back uh, of the um, project, but I feel it, uh, but I feel it gets in the way of the card. So uh, on this project I'm gonna attach the grommet on the front of the flap so if you wanna 
put the card inside of your back pocket make sure you have it nice and close and then using a grommet you're just gonna find the best placement and using that grommet itself you can mark where your hole needs to go and using a hole punch you can start your hole make sure that the grommet fits you want the hole to be slightly smaller so it has a nice uh, tight fit and now put your washer in and install your grommet after the grommet is installed we can put our keychain ring uh, through the grommet. As you can see, I embellish it with this little tassel. You can get a set of those tassels from Amazon that comes with a variation of colors. And now you can attach your little card holder wallet to your purse or to your keys um, to your little wristlet uh, attach it on your purse uh, so you have the most use uh, the most used cards easily accessible the project is now completed your card holder little wallet is ready to use I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and if you did please make sure to uh, give it a thumbs up uh, if you are not yet a subscriber to my channel and you would like to be notified about upcoming uh, videos please make sure to subscribe and to hit the notification bell uh, if you have any suggestions or questions um, or maybe ideas for other tutorials uh, please leave a comment below I'm always happy uh, to answer any questions and to uh, help you with any concerns you may have. Till the next time.